Hi, my name is Mike Houston. I'm a product line manager with Watt Stopper in charge of commercial dimming. I want to talk to you a little bit today about digital lighting management and the dimming and daylighting functions that we've got built in. The next one we're going to move on to is dimming configuration. And this is, like I said, what we're changing in the dimmer itself. We're changing the dimmed loads and how they behave. The options we have, we're going to, I'll show you how this works. So we're going to take the LMCT100. Let me turn all these lights on so you can see my lights up here. And I'll go to dimming configuration. When I press and, hold, when I press and, and point at any IR enabled device, this could even be an occupancy sensor up in the, the corner, but since I have switches here, I'll point at that. When I point at these, what you're going to see happen is one light blinked. In this case, it was my cove lights. That tells me those are the lights I'm working on. And what the LMCT100 displays is, what can I change for my cove lights? Okay? So if you look back to the PowerPoint, what you'll see, I can change the type. Is it a dim load or a switch load? Since this room controller will do dimming or switching, we had to default it as something. So by default, this thinks it's controlling dim loads, because we felt like most of the time it will be. If you have a switch load connected to one of these channels, it's really a good idea to use the LMCT100 and change the load type to switch. All the other changes will happen automatically. All you have to do is tell me it's a switch load, and I'll make the changes for you in the background. So what can we change about in dimming configuration? You can see here we can change low trim and high trim. These are hard limits. If I set a high trim or if I set a low trim, this is the highest level. A high trim is the highest level the system will allow. Okay? That's it. If you set it at 80%, you get 80%. I don't care how long you press and hold this dimmer, you're going to be capped at 80%. It's a powerful feature. It can also be a, a, a feature I would exercise caution when using. Okay? The only place that you can override that trim level is at the push buttons on the room controller. We have these load control buttons on the room controller, and this is an installer feature. We wanted to make sure that the installer can check his wiring. So if you look at the demo here, I will play with these, um, these cove lights. Okay? I can turn them on and off. I can also press and hold this button and dim those to make sure that my wiring is good. So as I press and hold this button, you'll see that that cove light dims, and after a couple of seconds, it's going to start going brightening back up. Okay? Now, if I turn it off in a dimmed position, when I turn it back on, it's going to come on to full bright. The reason for that is, I'm an electrician, my head's in the ceiling, and the lights are down below. So when I press that button, I need to see that those lights came on. Okay? So, we just put that feature in so that the electrician can test his wiring. And I didn't want if somebody set a high trim at 50% and the electrician doesn't see that the lights came on. So this is the only place that will override high and low trim. The other feature you'll see on there is preset level. We talked about that concept, preset level. This is where you set it. You'll see that by default it's last level. So if you want to set that for 90%, right here you'd enter 90% and you hit send. This is on a load by load basis, so I could have just the cove lights set to 90% and the others have no preset level. That 90% is what will be recalled every time I press a button to turn the light on, or if I walk into the space, the lights are off and the occupancy sensor catches me and turn the lights on. It will always turn that cove light on to 90%. It's a great feature. The next one you'll see is burn-in hours, and we've talked about burn-in hours. Here's where you set it. The default is zero. You can set it for 12 or 100. Okay? Now, if your load type is a switched load, or if you change load type from dim to switch, it'll present this next screen. And this screen just says, now I'm a switch load, and as a switch load, my trip point is 51%. Remember we talked about trip point, so that's if I'm trying to dim, ramp up or down a switch load, at 51% on the way up, I'll turn on. Anything below 51, I'll turn off. This is where you change it. You don't have to change it, okay? It works just great out of the box. But it is important if you have a switched load that you're going to run off on one of these dimming room controllers to change it to a switched load so that the behavior is what you expect. Now the last feature in the LMCT100 that I want to show you is this one called Adjust Light Level. It's a very simple feature. It's a very temporary change. Basically, when I, sh when I point at the fixture or at the demo here, I'm going to select Adjust Light Level. I'm going to point it. And it's going to present the screen. It says adjust light level, load one. Left, right, picks the load, up, down, adjust the level. So it blinked the load. I didn't catch which load, so I'm going to arrow over. Oh, there's my down lights. So now I'm going to dim my down lights. I'll dim them all the way to their minimum. 
So I'm pressing and holding, and hopefully you can see that this is dimming down to its minimum level, okay? Now, my sconces, and I can dim them down to their minimum level. You'll also notice that the LEDs on the dimmer that's assigned to it are also tracking that. So I'm gonna get that down to the minimum. I'll arrow to the cove lights. They're right now at 100%, and we'll just go ahead and ramp them down. So you can watch that cove light dim. So now what I've been able to do is take all the lights in the space, dim them down to their minimum level without touching a dimmer, okay? Show you in a minute why I think that's a pretty cool, pretty powerful feature. So that's a just light level. As far as other products that we have in the line for DLM dimming, we have remote controls. These are just for user convenience. We have a one button and a five button remote control. Here they are live and in person. And if I were to just point over here and press scene one, the lights went to scene one. If I press my off, they're gonna turn off. Okay, so this works in every room. It's pre-programmed at the factory. It will recall scenes one through four on off. This one is a one button, and it's basically mimics a single dimmer. By default, it's bound to all loads. So if I were to point at my demo here and turn them on, and I press and hold the bottom, I'm gonna ramp them all down. So that's basically what the handheld remote does. I, I kind of blew through it and showed it to you live. We'll show it to you on the PowerPoint. So the one button dimming remote control does on, off, and dim, and has an LED indicator to tell you when you turn the load on. It has predefined plug and go operation. It's bound to all loads. You can change that. In fact, inside of each of these remote controls in the battery compartment, what you'll find is a configuration button and a configuration LED. So I can use this remote to enter, push, and learn, and then I can bind whichever load I want to this. Now, since by default, it's bound to all loads and it works in any room, this is another way to make friends with your neighbors in other offices, is just to kind of hide this under your arm, walk by their office, and adjust their lights. Okay, I don't recommend that, just saying it's possible. Okay, so the other thing, I uh, just talked about how we can do push and learn with it. It can control one or more loads. Now, the handheld remote for scene control, the scene switch, it's the LMRH105, basically mimics what my scene switch does. So four preset scenes, raise lower, um, predefined plug and go operation. It comes with scenes one through four and those light levels again, 175, 50, 25. And alternate scenes are selectable. We tried to make it easy with this one. In the back of the battery compartment, there are two dip switches so that you can quickly flip a dip switch and make this scenes five through eight in case you had two of these in an open office or something like that. Just wanted to make it as easy as possible to get through there. 